Hi, so um, this might be interrupted, but I'm going to start working on swapping a screen into a ThinkPad. Um, specifically, it's an X60 and an X61T that I've got here. I mean, well, it's an X60 and an X61 tablet version. They're both tablets. Um, the 61 had an SXGA Plus screen in it, which um, is the kind of screen that likes to leak like pine tar goo all over everything. Um, so like there's a little bit of sticky residue on here still, but it just gets everywhere. And um, I tried to like separate the glue from the back plate. I mean, like separate the glass on the front of the screen from the um, screen itself. And the glass is what's glued down. Um, broke the screen. So um, I knew there was a decent chance I would. Didn't make me very happy about it, but I did break that screen. Um, so I ended up giving up and going for the alternative, which was a stupidly expensive, but I did it anyway. Um, so the other option is the X60 tablet had a similar screen except um, like a similar 1400 by 1050 screen in four to three aspect ratio at 12 inches as the X61 tablet. But the one difference is that the glass is not glued to the display in the X60. So um, on account of that, it's not direct bonded in Lenovo's terminology. Um, so because of that, um, it's an ideal candidate if you can find an X60 tablet um, to swap into an X61. And the reason I don't just use it as an X60 tablet is because this is 32-bit only. Um, this one's 64-bit. Um, unfortunately, again, there are some later X61 tablets that can support up to 8 gigabytes of RAM, um, which have like Penryn, Revision, Core 2 Duo CPUs in them. This predates that, although it is still Core 2 Duo, so it's 64-bit capable, but I think it maxes out 4 gigs of RAM. I haven't actually totally verified this, but I think that's the case. So anyway, yeah, bit of a shame there, but what am I going to do? So um, yeah, basically I have these two here. Oh yeah, one more nice thing, um, IBM logo, so that's definitely going on to here. But yeah, um, so I'm swapping around some parts between these two computers. And uh, just got this one from eBay. Barely even touched it. I did turn it on to check that it works. Um, and it does, and it feels nice. It looks in good shape. I still am not a fan of the price tag, but it uh, seems to be in good working order and well cared for screen's a little wobbly, but this one was too, and I'm kind of thinking it might just be a thing that they all do. Um, anyway, so, uh, on with the show, I guess. Um, I've got the service manual pulled up here, which I should probably show you where you can find this thing. Um, so, it's from EOL, the EOL Lenovo site. Um, which is end of life. EOL means end of life. Um, you can download um, service manuals, drivers, that kind of thing for most of their older products here. Um, I remember a few years ago looking for my X201 tablet drivers and not find specifically to get a BIOS update and not finding it anywhere on Lenovo's main site and having to be linked here because they just moved it. So maybe it's well known by now, but at the time it wasn't, so I'm drawing attention to it. Because if I didn't witness it, then it didn't happen, obviously, you know? <laughs> um, okay, yeah, so the X61 tablet and the X60 tablet are both lumped together, and this column is way off here. I wish it were closer so it were easier to tell that they were in line with each other. But this is the one. So, um, yeah, you can download that.
if the screen flickers, that's uh, an NVIDIA slash Firefox bug that has been driving me insane for months, but which apparently no one else has. Maybe that'll help with um, the screen too. By the way, if you are just now seeing differences, that's because of another bug. Anyway, um, I blame NVIDIA for everything because it's always their fault. Um, yeah, so I'm uh, downloading the file. And I actually already have this, so I'll just remove it now. But yeah, that's, that's where you find it. Leno Download.lenovo.com slash EOL. Um, and let's see, where did I have? Yeah, there it is. So I will shrink down the video feed for a moment and move it up here. Yeah. And that doesn't need to be opened anymore. Sorry, doing a little maintenance. There we are. So, um, yeah, I just jumped right into this. Um, there's a little table of contents that it comes with. Um, so it's under the heading of ThinkPad X16, X61 tablet, removing and replacing an FRU. FRU is Field Replaceable Units. It's IBM's terminology for basically a part that um, service that like you can buy from Lenovo slash IBM um, as a service or repair part. Um, not necessarily user replaceable, but still serviceable without sending it into IBM basically, or Lenovo. Um, okay, so yeah, LCD assembly. And I'm already there, that's why I didn't do anything. Right. Um, so then unfortunately it makes you do a little bit of um, additional trawling. So here it wants me to re first remove a bunch of other stuff. So the battery pack is already done. It's right here. Um, the hinge caps are, well those are annoying, but let's do them. They've already all been done on the one, the X61 here. Well, most of them have, but um, not on the other. So here we go. Hinge caps. So first it wants me to twist it like this. You can probably make this smaller. Yeah. And I can make this larger now. There we are. Maybe that's a little better. And I'll also bump up the light level for you a bit. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so um, now's focus. Yeah, it was pretty much right on. Okay, so. Now um, they want me to pop open the lid, twist the display, and they, they show it in that partial position um, right here, but really they want you to flip it all the way around and then flip it down. And that kind of tripped me up the first time because I think on the X201 tablet, which is the laptop that I'm hoping to replace this um, to replace with the X60 slash X61 hybrid that I'm building. Um, I hope to replace it higher resolution in every way. A little bit slower, but I mean, the X201 was never fast. Um, didn't bother me. But yeah, sorry, I'm getting sidetracked. I wanted to replace it with this as my daily driver. Um, hopefully that doesn't prove to be a mistake. <laughs> I do love the form factor and layout of these, though with the four to three screen and the high resolution IPS, well not IPS, it's an AFFS display. Advanced field fringe switching or something. Advanced fringe field switching, I don't know, one of the two. 
It's an alternative that sort of is like IPS in terms of the viewing angles, though, and a lot of old um, ThinkPad tablets used them. Okay, so it wants me to pop it like this. I always feel like I'm going to break these things. And they're never as easy as they show. So like, once you've popped off the back, it tells you to just like lift up. I don't know how you're supposed to lift up because these things are have another tab. I probably have the other hinge cap over here somewhere still. I have too much clutter on my desk. I'm sorry about that. Maybe it's an illness, but it's been a very hard habit to kick. And I usually know where things are, roughly speaking, or feel like they'd be even more lost if I didn't do it this way. Okay, well, here's the back of the hinge. Um, so that's one part. I'll just check if maybe it fell on the floor when I was um, repairing Game Boys yesterday. Isn't this an exciting stream, guys, or an exciting recording? By the way, if I get a call, like, halfway through this, I'm going to pause the video and maybe finish it later. Or maybe I'll just um, show whoever gets, whoever calls me, um, what I'm doing. And in that case, maybe you won't get audio. But I'll continue recording if that is the case, if I remember. The call might not happen at all, either. So, let's see. Where would I have put that? Let this be a lesson to you guys. Don't live like I do. cables down here too. Hmm. Very strange. Well, hopefully that won't become a problem because hopefully I won't break this one. <laughs> I didn't break the other one by the way, so if worse comes to worse, I know it's around here somewhere. I took this ThinkPad apart like a week or so ago. So, it should still be rather nearby. Can't have traveled too far. Even with all the other projects I've been involved in. So yeah, okay, I don't, I don't see it. But, you'll see what they look like in a moment, maybe. There's basically a secondary locking tab um, on this inside of the um, hinge and it really doesn't specify that it should be a problem it just shows you the little picture of you popping it up and like oh yeah it's just simple you know uh, first remove the hinge cap how useful So I'm inserting the shaft of this screwdriver in. Maybe I'll try these needle noses. There it goes. And I may have broken that tab off. It probably won't matter anyway, but I do intend to find the correct hinge cap. Oh, there it is. Ha. <laughs> Yep, and the hinge tab clip thing is still, oops, intact on this one. You probably won't be able to see it in the video, but basically there's, it's a little clip on the inside right here, and another one on the other side of it. Um, and those together just clip into place. If you ever open up one of these things, you'll be able to see that there's a little slit here on the metal bar under the hinge, or in the hinge, and um, that's what it clamps onto on either side. 
Yeah, I have like a 50% success rate with these, it seems. I don't know if they're um, exchangeable with the ones in the X200 tablets and X201 tablets, but they might be. I know the rest of the hinge isn't, though, because um, with those, with the 200s, you can flip them either direction, and here you can only flip them one direction. Okay. So, next, I need what? Oh yeah, to do the other side. So it wants me to open it, swivel it around, close it again, pop it down, and pry this thing off, which is the thing I found earlier. Yep, and that popped right off into my lap. No problem. Putting that on the mouse pad. Okay. So... You've done that. I need a Phillips head screwdriver bit. There we are. And next step. Wants me to do the keyboard. Does it? No. No, it just wants me to do the hinge cap. Now we'll go back to LCD assembly. Um, yeah, keyboard is next. So, flip over. It's a good idea to follow the order of removals that they show in the service manual, just because sometimes, I mean, it's really hard to articulate, but there are awkward positions you'll find yourself getting into where you would expect for something to work, but it actually doesn't. And, um, like, or, like, if you take the lid off of a hinge, for instance, but the hinge wasn't lying flat. You have to then reinstall the lid while while it's standing upright so that you don't like break the back of the lid while you're screwing down the hinge or something. Or you have to move both of the hinges independently of each other and keep them aligned in a regular laptop. Um, anyway, yeah, it's just a huge hassle and something to be aware of. So it wants me to remove these, and the nice thing about ThinkPads is that they have all these nice little legends. Let me actually see if I can show you that by swapping lenses really fast. Okay. Should be coming back in a moment now. There we are, and focus. Yeah, that's good. So yeah, there are these little markings, um, these printed markings, right, um, in white or gray or something um, next to a lot of the screw holes. And um, in the X60 and X61, they all have letters attached to them as well, which is also quite handy. The X200 I don't think does have that anymore, um, but it still has the little symbols. So um, there's a palm rest symbol, which is kind of a little box with a few dots along the bottom of it. There's the keyboard, which is a box with a bunch of dots all over it with an obvious looking space bar. Um, the, the little water drip under there is to say that that's a drainage channel, I think. So it's, this is a drainage cham channel for the keyboard, um, this hole right here. Uh, this one you remove to get to the palm rest and the keyboard, So because you have to remove one to get to the other, apparently. Anyway, so all the ones with the keyboard sign. Let's um, take those out. And I'm putting these on the palm rest as well. Another nice thing about the service manual is that it tells you the length of the screws which is really, and the color, which is really handy when you're putting it back together. So you can try to figure out, based on how many screws you have left, what the screws for the thing are, if you get them mixed up. Okay, so um, keyboard, I'm guessing I might have to remove the palm rest as well. Well, yes, I'm going to remove the palm rest because um, I want the IBM badging on my X61 who wouldn't. 
it's colorful. I like it. Um, let us continue here. This one screw in this corner is a different length than all the others I noticed when I was working on the X61 earlier. Um, it's much, much shorter. It is the only screw labeled A, I think, on the underside. Um, I think the lettering might refer to the kind of screw, like the size. So the size A is the tiny one. Most of these are C's. And then there are some silver ones labeled B along the back, under the battery bay. Um, anyway, just an observation. I'm going to remove all these screws at once because I know that that won't mess anything up, having done this before. But uh, let's get to it. screw did not want to come out. I think this might be a little bit rounded. Oh, that's not too bad. Is it my bit? Could be. I'll try a different bit. Yeah, that's actually worse, so I do want the bigger bit. Okay, I think these are both the same size, but oh well. <clears throat> yeah, this one came out without a problem with this bit, so maybe it's not. Maybe it was just that one screw, I don't know. We'll see if it keeps happening. Don't use the wrong screwdriver. Just get a set or something, it, you'll not regret it. When I take apart a bunch of stuff that I took apart a long time ago, when I was like under 18 for the most part and didn't really have all the tools that I wanted to have access to, like I just realized how terrible of a job I did because of all the rounded screws or nearly rounded off screws that I have to deal with. All right, in the X60, unlike the X201, which I'm coming from, uh, you also have to remove the uh, bezel around the top of the keyboard, I think, to get the palm rest off. And that would be a big problem in the X60, I mean, in the X200 series, because the bezel there is like extremely fragile. And all the replacements on eBay are pre broken for your enjoyment because they're all used. Um, and there are these teeny tiny little hooks. Um, well, uh, I, I can probably draw it. Um, wish I had my drawing tablet hooked up, but I don't. Okay, so let's put a white background on that. A white background. There we go. And a black foreground. So basically there are hooks, okay, so the, the um, thing I'm talking about is this bezel that goes around the back of the laptop. So the hinge is right here on the tablet models um, in the center, and the keyboard is here. And the palm rest is here. Um, no, sorry. The keyboard is larger than this, or... <sighs> that drives me crazy. I'm going to have to redo that. So, keyboard and the uh, palm rest thing, I mean the bezel thing, are here. And the palm rest attaches to the upper bezel there. And there are the buttons for the uh, 
track point, and there's the track point. Okay, so um, the so the way that the palm rest attaches to the bezel, the uh, upper bezel piece extends down. So here's a side view of the laptop with the keyboard up top and the hinge up here now. And um, yeah, the charger's on the other side on these. So I'll just like put the ventilation fan here so you know where I am. Uh, so the bezel just runs along the top like this and reaches down to the bottom of the keyboard and then there's this teeny tiny little hook thing on the X200 series and on this one, but only on one side on this one. And this hook, um, the palm rest lies down on top of that hook. And so that's how they're anchored together. And that hook is tiny and always breaks. So like I bought a pack of um, five used keyboard bezels and only one was intact on both sides. It's horrible. And then they break all the time, even when you're trying to be careful. So yeah, there's still one of these on the X60 series, but because of just the way the rest of it is built, it doesn't seem to be as big of a problem. Okay, so let's go back to what we were doing. Um, yeah. Make sure all these are empty. Yep, they look like they are. So now I'll flip this back over, pop it open, and you can push back the keyboard like that. And this is the same on the X200 as well, um, the way you remove these. So um, you pop, you push it back a little bit, then you pull it up from the front, and there's this shortish ribbon cable here which you want to be nice and gentle with. And there's a little pull tab on the top that you can pull on to detach it. Now, because I have another one of these, and I'm kind of curious, I'm going to see which... Ah, uh, they use the... Um, they use... I think that's the NMB switch mechanism right there. Uh, so it's this mechanism where there's a little flat plastic kind of cover over top of the rubber dome. Let's see if I can focus that any better for you. Yeah, there we are. Um, yeah, and it keeps it nice and flat, I think, on the top is the idea, so it doesn't wobble. It's good and stable. Um, none of the X200 keyboards I've ever had have had that. I don't think they exist for the X200s, but um, some of my Dell Latitudes have this. Um, well, actually, one out of three has this on the Latitudes, and both of these X61 keyboards that I have have it. And I think they're both made by the same manufacturer, which is Nibe and Bia, if I'm, or Nimebi. I don't actually know how to do it in Japanese, but it's a Japanese company. Uh, oh, these are actually different FREs. So maybe these are actually different providers. Interesting. Gonna have to uh, see which one I prefer then. Both pretty consistent, actually. Don't know which one I prefer. That's neat. Okay, let's put that aside for a moment. I know which one is which because um, I'd already put the concave track point that I like, um, which I think Lenovo called the soft rim until they discontinued it, and um, IBM called the golf tee. Anyway, they have that and. Um, Oh, is this actually different? I think this is. This is a different palm rest design. Yeah, it is. So, um, interesting. On the X61, there is a little break right here in the plastic. And in the X60, there isn't. So this is all one continuous piece in the X60, I guess. Interesting. Well, glad I caught that. So might be pulling off the whole thing and hopefully it will still transfer. Hopefully there's still 
close enough otherwise. Yeah, it actually shows you how to remove the keyboard down here. But LCD assembly keyboard keyboard bezel for x60 tablet and then palm rest for x61 tablet so yeah the palm rest for the x61 um yeah you see that hook right there that's what i was talking about um and that is a horrible design in my opinion i'm going to blame lenovo for cheaping out even though i don't know for sure that that's what happened i just suspect it and that's good enough for me. Just suspecting someone means that they're guilty. Yeah. That, that's how it works, right? So, yeah, anyway, that aside, I think up a page was the X60 tablet. Yeah, so it's different on the X60. Neat. And this is actually closer to how I think it was in my ThinkPad 350. Um, well, not 350. What was it? Yeah, it was a 350. And um, the 800 as well. No, the seven, the 760, I think, was what I had. Sorry, I've had a bunch of ThinkPads over the years. I wish I had kept the 760, but it had been given to me with roaches. So I had that thing for about 10 minutes, and then it was gone. <sighs> Don't deal with roaches. If you get something with roaches, just, like, burn it. I mean, it's probably not worth saving. And you don't want the infestation. So, yeah, just take it from me. Say no to roaches. Sorry if that made anyone uncomfortable thinking about roaches, but I'll try to stop talking about them now. <laughs> yeah, this is the SSD that I shoved in earlier, and um, because of the height difference, I put a little wooden nickel which is like from a music store. It's this thing where you get a bunch of wind nickels and then you trade them in and you can get like, I think a discount or free music or something. I think it's like $5 store credit for 10 of them or something, whatever. Um, I put one of those in there as a spacer because it's just an SSD. It's not like a hard drive. So it doesn't really matter if there's pressure there too much. Anyway, yeah, so I'm gonna have to remove these screws and you can see that there are a lot of screws on the uh, the guide here that it wants me to remove. So um, I think I got them all except for the back row, which I'm doing right now. And thankfully these are all silver, so they're hard to confuse with any of the others so far. send someone a message real fast. All right. Uh, that's done. That's about the phone call I'm waiting on. Um, back to this. Sorry about these delays. Got all those screws out. Flip it back over. The um, X61 I'd also bought for parts, so I was just pleasantly surprised when it worked anyway. So, honestly, yeah, just as another side thought, could have been worse. Okay, so it wants me to... screws which I did and then lift the bezel like that so I think this means that first you lift upwards then you make sure that the uh, clips along the side are released and then you pull forward that's what I'm going with let's uh zoom that out a bit.
wish I had more granularity with this program, but I like it so much otherwise that I'll deal with it. There we go. So, pop up, I guess. Oh, yeah, that's coming right out. Yeah, there it is. And then the side clips, those are out. And then you pull forward. Yeah, that released really smoothly. I really like that design more than what came later, although I guess it also means that you have to buy a bigger replacement part, which means a larger shipping package. So maybe that's why they changed it. I don't know. I, I do know, though, that I'm going to try to move this onto the X61, if it'll let me, because I prefer that. Um, okay, so... Just remembered another thing. Um, so the wireless car in the X61 is screwed down here, and these things get really hot in the X61. And unfortunately, it seems like the screws get, like to get fixed in place, so if I ever want to replace the wireless card in the X61, I'm going to have to drill it out. Um, really wish I didn't have to do that, because it doesn't have release tabs like this one does. But Oh well. Um, I would like to replace it with an Atheros card eventually, like I did in the X200 series. But we'll see if it ever comes to it. Oh, I also noticed there's no actual socket here for the card, even though the looks like they have a place that one could be soldered in. That's actually really irritating if you were going to use it for anything, which I'm not. Um, I don't need to remove that. I just need to go to the next step, which is LCD assembly. Um... Yeah, there's the keyboard bezel on the 61, which is like just a half-sized version of the other one. You see, so you lift it up on the sides and then pull it out. Um, back to this, so... Oh yeah, it does want me to remove the cards. You don't actually have to remove the cards, you need to unplug the antennae. So, I'm going to remove the antennae. This thing might never have been opened. Looks really nice in here, and this, uh, this stuff seems to be taped down still, and this tape doesn't really like to re-adhere, which is quite annoying. Okay, I'm going to actually take a picture of this, and I'll put it more on the screen as well for you, just uh, so I know how the wires were routed. There we are. Okay, so, yeah, and you need to remove these wires because they go up into the lid here. Um, the antenna is in the lid. so. To get the lid off, you need to remove those. Um, yeah. I'll actually click on these just to make sure there's nothing tricky. Yep, nothing there that's particularly tricky. And I don't have the WAN card at all, so. I don't even have the socket populated for a WAN card. So back to LCD assembly. Okay. Wants me to remove... these two screws. Sorry, I'll put the camera back on and move this over. There we are. So I'm going to brighten up the, yeah. 
Yeah, so remove these two screws. And these look to be the same size as the ones that were holding the keyboard down. Let me check that the thickness is the same. Oh, it's not. Okay, so the um, hinge screws are slightly thicker than the keyboard screws. So I'm going to keep those separate on the other side of the mouse pad. Okay. Now, take off the tape securing the antenna cables. Okay. Oh, it actually gives you the layout of the cables. So that's good of them. Um, wants me to do that, then I'm going to have to flip this back over and looks like the microphone cable needs removing too. Oh, okay, that's a good thing to note. So the microphone cable, is that masking tape? I'm not sure if that's factory. It could be. It looks like masking tape. So there's, um, yeah, this white line that goes along here. Yeah. Oh, that car alarm is not mine. Okay. Continue. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, so this... There we are. Didn't want to release there. If I break the microphone cable, I'm not actually too worried about it, because I never use it, but... It'd be good to keep it working, if I can. So that's free. Now, um... I can release this. There are actually more antennae in the um, X61. Well, no, actually for Wi-Fi, that's all there is, what we've got right here, um, three wires. But there might be more in there for a WAN card, where one installed. But it isn't. Okay, so I have those released. Did it have me, it looks like I skipped a step. Um, Cause there's this little circuit board here that um, goes over these cables that I think attaches the display connector. Let's peek inside of here. 
I'm gonna have to take this out anyway, so let's actually switch over to the X61 for a moment. Okay, I did put the screws back in for the palm rest and bezel. That's annoying. Let's get those out. I'll put them on the other side. another. Looks like I didn't put all the screws back in because I didn't put in the keyboard. I probably put in the palm rest so the screen could latch down again. For the lid since the screen is gone. Hmm. That's good. So, palm rest on the 61 comes off to the side like that. So you have to like put it in like that, I think. No, you uh, put it back in like the opposite, kind of weirdly the opposite of how you take it off like that. But then you pull it up from this side which is the side with the stupid hook, um, which is broken off on mine. Um, yeah, so there's the palm rest. And then the bezel on the top, which I had harder a harder time with on this. But I guess doing it a second time, you kind of know what how it goes. So it seemed easy enough this time. OK, so there's the top. Of these. I bet this will actually just pop right down. Yeah, I think that actually fits. Cool. Okay. Well, we'll get to that when we get to it. For now. Have a screen to remove. And I guess this circuit board on top that it just never mentions that I need to take off, but which I do. If it did mention it, then I completely misread it, and it was one of the prerequisites for one of the other steps I already did. Okay, so. these screws are different sized too. So long screw, short screw. It's got to be in the service manual somewhere. But oh, LCD extend. Yeah, LCD extend board. Here we are. So it tells me what the lengths are for everything. 
it looks like there are three different sizes of screws. Of course, of course there are. So yeah, this um, basically just, I think, moves the connector from this spot on the board up to here so that the LCD uh, hinge cable thing can just hook on right there and not have torque going all the way down. Something like that. I don't know what the words I'm using are correct, but... Okay. Now, don't strip. Had to put way more pressure than I'd like to on that one because it was trying to strip on me. Like the wireless card ones already did. Oh, by the way, yeah, wireless card. And this one has two sockets, so I could probably just stick the other one there, but I want to remove this one because it generates a lot of heat under the palm rest. Yeah, not going, and I don't want to flex the board too much. So that'll be for future use with a drill. Sorry, video, there we are. Yeah, so then I think, let me verify this. Yeah, so now it should pop off. Should be a connector here and a connector here. Yep, and it popped off. Oh, I didn't, stupid me. Okay, so here's the Here's the um, LCD cable, and here's the other connector, and yeah, so it just bridges the two. Um, all right, so now I think with that undocumented step out of the way, or seemingly undocumented step, yeah, it's just not mentioned here, the LCD extend, or whatever thing isn't mentioned here. So, yeah. But we remove that and um, probably should feed the microphone cable out too on this one. Which, it's in the same place, so I guess it was the same design. I guess maybe that was why the bezel is wider on one side than the other. I kind of wondered, but I didn't really get bothered by it. I like having a thicker bezel, actually. This means less delicate, probably. Um, all right, so. Three wireless antennae here. I'm going to take a picture of these as well on the X61, just for consistency. Yeah, okay. So from there, I need to release the tape on this one, and this one has more copper on it than the other one did. Or when I think just a plastic here. Interesting the little differences between these things. sure what that is um but let's see i guess i need to lift this out of here and unfortunately it seems to be routed underneath the power connector board which is or wire which 
I really don't like. If it wasn't the microphone cable, I'd probably be more careful with it. Okay, so that was that wire. I see. Yeah, and it's just routed underneath for some reason. It's stupid. Okay, so, um... Remove the rear screws. On the X61. Remove the front screws on the F61, which are, uh, well, they're these two. Um, yeah, one there and one there. just pops right up. Nice and lightweight without the screen in there. There's more tape down here. And I'll pull the mic cable through. Yeah, that's so stupidly routed. I might just omit it when I move it over. Because there's no webcam or anything. I mean, there's no real reason to care about the mic too much for my purposes. Anyway, um, so yeah, that, that, lid is, that lid is out um, from the X61. And I'm keeping the chassis the same, so. Now I just have to remove the lid from the X60 the rest of the way. I already got started on that by removing those two rear screws and unrouting most of this. So let's get to the LCD cable now, or the LCD bridge board. The hard cable, let's call it, or I'm calling it. short screw. Short screw. Short screw. Long screw. Longest screw. The first one was long, by the way, but not that long. And medium length, so I guess what I was originally calling long. And medium length. So pop it out from the side like I did the other one. There we are. And detach the LCD panel. There we are. Okay. Now. Two more screws to go. And it looks like the mic might have been routed above the other cable on this one, unless I pulled it out without remembering doing it, which is possible. <laughs> Almost dropped it. It was ready to come out. Crap, these are routed under more tape. So on this one, the power cord is on top of... This is stupid. Okay, so the power cord is on top 
of the antennae on this one. That's so stupid. Okay. Well, now that's out. I'm gonna pop this back down right now before I forget, since I'm not planning to route it underneath. Even if it means worse signal or whatever, I don't care. Um, okay, so this is the X60, and I can remember it's the X60 because it has these two little like leaf spring things for easy release instead of freaking screws that like get bonded to the metal and are impossible to remove and also it has no no card socket here and also it probably says x60 on the bottom or at least has the type number yeah it has the type number 6363 which is an x60 type number Oh, here's a legend for the screw types, um, A, B, and C. So it shows you the lengths right there. Cool. Okay, um, putting this aside for a moment. Bringing the 61 back, which we are going to now put the X60 SXGA panel into the X60 SXGA panel, of course, being the good one. And I'm not even going to bother changing the sticker on the front of this or replacing the front bezel because, um, well, the front bezel on the X61 has tons of pine tar glue or whatever from the uh, direct bonded display that seeped in, that seeped all over it. And um, I tried cleaning it like with alcohol. I tried putting it in the dishwasher. I've tried a lot of things, and nothing has really gotten rid of that glue. Um, around, it's especially annoying around like the lock switch for the power button on the lid of the tablet. Uh, okay, that wasn't lined up. There we go. Yeah, so it was especially annoying with the power switch, which is there, um, or the lock switch for the power switch. That prevents you from accidentally pressing the power button when you're not meaning to. Um, because that was all gummed up. Not to mention, I guess it could be bad for the electronics in there, maybe. Especially if I'm correct and the glue is hygroscopic, which is why I am guessing that the uh, X61s all have screen bubbles and stuff. The antenna wire there was routed the wrong way. Hopefully I didn't damage it. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, now... Okay, rear two screws are in. Then... I need to replace the rest of it. Maybe I will try to feed this under. No, that's not going to happen. Well, maybe it will if I actually remove this a little bit. Yeah. There we go. Probably could have just done that to begin with. 
Okay. Tuck it in. Well, there's that. <sighs> Microphone cable seems to be routed. I'll put this under this plastic tab that's supposed to slide under. Or I'll try to. There we are. The adhesive isn't really sticking, but It'll probably be fine like this, just because it's going to have the bezel over top. Um, I don't remember the order of the antenna wires. But I think it shows it in my picture here. So, we will see. It's probably not going to destroy the world if they're in the wrong order. Regardless. Antenna wires underneath the LCD cord. I'm gonna stick them under this yellow captain tape. Or at least I believe this is what captain tape is. I've never actually had it stated to me, and I've never actually bought any. But I believe this is what people mean when they refer to captain tape. Okay, so this wire was kind of going along like that. And I'm not actually sure if it matters which one is which as long as they're all connected and they're all separate either. But they are numbered, so. I believe the usual order is that black is the first one and white is the second one on a two antenna card, which are what almost all my other cards are. Um, but yeah, third antenna probably is the gray one. And yeah, see that the tape isn't sticking down anymore. Once you've lifted it, it's just it doesn't want to go back really. So. Hmm. I just heard a Wind Dixie car horn outside. <whistles> Not something I was expecting to hear today. Not very common around here. Okay. That was very off topic, but maybe my. Continuing to fill the void is entertaining to you. Um, let's see if we can focus that better for you. Yeah, I guess that's about as good as it'll get. But um, yeah, this tape doesn't hold anymore. I know electrical tape won't in the long term, but it's probably not going to hurt anything, so here it goes. Life hacks. Oh yeah. Okay, where's my Leatherman now? Gonna need that to cut the tape. Or no, I won't. I have my wire strippers. Fly packs. Oh, yeah. Okay. Routed.
That is perfectly the way it was before, I am sure. Okay, now we have that card in, have the antenna routed, we have those screws in, we need to do the back screws. Which I believe are the same thickness and size as the front ones were, but not the keyboard ones or the bezel ones underneath. So that's, I think, 2.5 millimeters diameter. I don't know about the thickness. Oh yeah, it says M2.5 and six millimeter. Seems about right. I don't really work in metric, unfortunately, just I, I wish I did, but unfortunately I was raised in America, so that's just, I'm permanently brain damaged that way. Please excuse me, I'm an American. I can't help it. Being stupid, it's in my blood. I don't actually think that, but I do think the metric system specifically is the superior system and that America was stupid for not, like, just taking it like everyone else did. Okay, so we have that done. Um, let's see. This is one of those things where they say reinstallation is the opposite of removal, so I'm going to have to figure out what that means. Okay, my friend showed up, so I'm going to stop the stream for a moment and talk to you later.